Welcome to CCF Eastwood. Come on. Yes, hi, welcome. Okay, welcome to 6 p.m. service. Okay, you may now take your seat. This is the 6 p.m. service. We want to take Rory Sabado for that announcement, one of our leaders here. And if it's your first time, we're on our series called Jesus, the Expression of God's Love. It's actually an overview of the book of Colossians. And for tonight, the message is very simple. Everybody, could you read the message? Live out. One more time. Yeah, parang di pa tayo nagdi-dinner. Pero okay lang. Okay, we're gonna work that out. Okay? Live out God's best in your life. In the past couple of weeks, we have been studying the book of Colossians chapter 1 and 2. So let me just quickly give you a quick overview of what we have learned so far. Three things that we have learned so far. Number one, we've learned about Christ's supremacy. Okay, meaning He is above all things. He is the center of our Christian faith, right? And then also, we've learned that he is, that for the fulfillment in Christ is something that is an integral part also of our walk, of our faith, right? And then lastly, we talked about we need to be aware of deceptive practices. Ano ba yung mga deceptive practices? These are the things that focus on human traditions or elemental forces but have no impact at all on addressing the power of our sinful nature. These practices, in fact, would give you a sense of righteousness or spiritual achievement, but they actually have no power over you. So that's what we have learned so far. But the fourth thing that we have learned so far I wanted to share with you all that is very important is this concept, this, uh, this belief, this truth that our spiritual growth is because of our union with Christ. We are described as believers, are united in Christ in His death and resurrection, symbolizing our new life and victory over sin. Okay, this is what we have learned so far in the past three weeks. And if I have summarized all the things that we need to learn in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 2 here. It talks about our doctrine, our, we are, who we are in Christ, and we know our resources. Because of what we have learned in the Colossians chapter 1 and 2, we will now go to Colossians chapter 3 and 4 tonight. And next Sunday, and we're going to talk about, really, our duty. How we're supposed to behave. How are we supposed to walk as a Christian? And how do we practice our position in Christ? Of course, Paul is now focusing on the practical application of the doctrines that you and I have been learning in the book of Colossians, verses in chapters 1 and 2. After all, it will be of little good, little good, if we declare and we defend the truth here, right? If we believe all of this, we declare all of this, it will be useless if we not do anything about it. Do you understand? And that's why I want to share to you this, 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 this statement. Do you, are you familiar with the word all sizzle and no stick? Are you familiar with that? It means, right, it means like that uh, you are all bark and no bite. That means, that means if you say this is who you are and yet you're doing something that's against that or you're doing nothing for that, then you're like this dog. You know, you all bark, but there no, there's no bite. It's like a person who talks a lot but has no action. Okay, and that is the challenge in the church today. Specifically, after going into a a very doctrinal, heavy topic on the book of Colossians, chapter 1 and 2, now we're going to go into a practical application. You know, ito yung mga ano, you know, sabi nga na asawa ko, my wife said that, you know, talk is cheap. It's easy to talk, but it's hard really to apply, right? And that's why when I look at this, when I look at the book of Colossians, if you have studied chapter 1 and 2, and you have understood what it means, Right? It means, and you're not doing anything about it, then you're like these politicians. Alam ito ba mga politicians ito? Politicians with empty promises. Nakakita na ba kayo nun na may mga politicians, maraming sinasabi, pero actually you're not doing something about it? That is exactly what Paul is talking about here in analogy. In our context in the church, these are the people, these are the Christians who don't walk the talk. And that is going to be what Paul is trying to motivate his readers, the people in Colossae, that we need to understand what is our position in Christ. Because once we have learned our positions in Christ, which he has elaborated in chapter 1 and 2, 
Now on chapter 3, what we need to do is we need to put into practice our life in Christ. And the sequence is very significant for all those of you who are joining us in CCF, where we really want to let you understand what the Word of God is saying. Very important po yung, yung, pros, yung, yung procedure. First, you need to understand your position, your inner life, and then once you understand your position in Christ, then that will affect you. That is when you can put it into practice. Marami pong mga Kristiyano, they really do not understand their position in Christ. They just do what they think is right. That's why it's inconsistent. That's why it's shallow. And for us to understand how to live out God's best in our life, then we need to make sure that we know our position and we are putting it into practice. This evening, there will be three very simple outlines. The first outline is we need to prioritize eternal values. Important po natin maintindihan. That's our focus. Second, once you understand these eternal values, you will need to put off your old self, your old life. And then our last point for tonight, everybody read our last point. Point, are you life in Christ? So what is our first point? We need to prioritize eternal values. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. With the word, therefore, you've been learning this from me, from a lot of the speakers. If you understand the word, therefore, you have to pause. Pag nabagbasa po kayo ng Bible, and then you see a word, therefore, you need to stop because you need to understand what is it there for. Okay? So here, what the Bible is saying is that we have been raised up with Christ. Keep seeking the things above. You need to understand tenses. You need to understand grammatical structure. So for example, your word have been raised. Is that past or present tense? Past or present? Past, meaning it has happened before. So if you read it, you have been raised, it means it's something that has happened in the past. And because that has happened in the past, and because God has done that to you, He has raised you from the dead, He has raised you up with Christ, the natural result of you being raised with Christ is that you will be keeping, seeking things above. Okay? That is the natural flow. In short, what the Bible is saying, because ngayon, hindi ka na yung dati mong pagkatao, ngayon kasama mo na si Jesus, if that is really true in your life, and that is you, and you're listening to me, and you know in your heart that you have surrendered your life to Jesus, and that you have understood the gospel, if that is you, what the Bible is saying is that we need to be who you are, or what you are. You need to practice what you say who you are, and that's how you live a brand new quality of life. That's how you live the best life possible. We all understand what this best life is all about. And if you understand this, tinan po, in verse 2, it's the same thing. The Bible tells us, everybody read this, set. Okay, hey, hey, hello everyone. If you're here, I encourage you to, when you say, read the word, you read the word. Okay? I've been, I, you know, it's, it's an amazing practice. When you, the, the, the word of God is alive. So when you want to have your word of God alive in your life, and when you say it, when you read it aloud, it impacts you. And that's why when we encourage you to, lead, to read it, you read it so that it will impact you. For example, what I'm asking you to read, set your mind on the things above. When you say that, because the word of God is alive, it impacts you. The problem is, we don't want to do this. We don't want to set our minds on things above. What we want is set the things here on earth. And that's why I encourage you, when we read God's word, we read it, okay? So, let's read this again, one more time. Verse 2, set your mind on things above. What does that mean? Pareho. Pareho ng verse 2 and verse 1. So, if you're, studying the, if you're studying the Bible, and you're reading the Bible, and you see as you read several verses, there are words that are being said, or phrases that are being said consistently, that means it's pretty much clear that the message of that group of verses is that. Dito po, in verse 1 to 2, pareho po yung sinasabi. Because that we have been raised with Christ, we need to keep on seeking. Present tense. Keep on seeking. That's how we prioritize eternal values by looking at things above, the heaven, and not here on earth. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are guarding your thoughts? When we say we need to set our things above, 
We need to set our mind on things above. That means, are we guarding our thoughts? You see, the door of our hearts, puso po natin, no, is wide open. Meaning, whatever we read, whatever we consume, affects us. The world, the devil, our sinfulness, once you open that up and you allow that all into you, that means it's going to affect you. And that's why have you ever thought about asking God, Lord, please help me. Please help me have the right thought pattern. Lord, please help me to have the right thoughts. The Bible tells us that we need to look upon eternal things. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is excellent, think about these things. And I submit to you, if you really change your thought pattern, if you really change your mind on how you think, it will change your life. Because you know the three principles? Are you, are you, do you are familiar with the three principles? Right thinking leads to right emotion that will give you the right actions. So, important po ating maintindihan that the three principle starts with guarding our thoughts. So, the question, ano po yung first point natin? Naalala niyo po yung first point? Prioritize eternal values. That's our first point. So, can I suggest to you some practical applications on how we could prioritize eternal values. Just give a couple of, of, uh, of practical application. I told you, this message, <clears throat> this message, I've been speaking the entire day, this message is about practical application. Sobrang daming practical application na gagawin natin ngayong araw na to. Because the past, two, sir, the past two Sundays, past two Sundays were all about doctrine. Ngayon po, it's all about duty, application. So for our first application point for today, when we talk about prioritizing eternal values, let me submit to you four key things that you could do as a practical application. The first application is spiritual practices. Kailangan po natin ng spiritual discipline. I don't know may mga spiritual discipline. Prayer, okay? Fellowship in D group. Scriptural reading. That, those are the spiritual practices. Kailangan pinapractice yan. Are you praying for people? Wag lang po magdasal about ourselves. You need to pray for other people. Okay? What about reading the Bible? Hinagwa po ba natin to daily? That's a spiritual discipline. What about being part of a small group? Every Sunday na lang po, nini-remind namin kayo dito to be part of a small group. And we will not, we will not stop to remind you because that's exactly what the Lord wants us to do. What about, by the way, meron kayong ginagawa isang tamang spiritual discipline. Kagad, alam niyo yung ginagawa yung tamang spiritual discipline? Umating kayo ng Sunday service. So sabihin mo sa katabi mo, thank you for attending Sunday service today. Sabihin mo, sabihin mo, thank you for attending Sunday service today because that is a spiritual discipline. Pero ano ba tayo sanay? Ano ba pinapractice natin instead of the spiritual practices? Ano pinapractice natin? Ano yung mga earthly practices na pinapractice natin? Let me suggest to you, instead of praying, instead of reading the Bible, ano ginagawa natin? We read Facebook. We read social media. Instead of spending time in fellowship in a D group, we spend time reading other people's lives. Yung po yung earthly practice. Ano po yung mga earthly practice natin? Instead of praying and listening and meditating on God's word, practice natin, hinihintayin natin yung next sale. Right? Ano ba yun? Ten, ano ba yun? Seven, seven, ano ba yun? Mga ganyan, right? Inaabangan. Di ba? Oh, yun ang practice natin eh. Hinihintay ka, ganito yung bukla ko. Ganun ka agad. Click. Iba-iba yung mga pinapractice natin eh. But spiritual practices is something that you need to do if you will want to prioritize eternal values. Can I submit to you another practice? Aside from spiritual practice, what can we do? We can have service to others. That's another eternal value. Are you serving people? Kaya po dito kanina in announced there's going to be a retreat. That's why, ako, that's why here in CCF Eastwood, we're passionate in asking people to serve. You know why? Because when you're actively seeking to serve, this shifts the focus away from yourself. And do you agree? Now, we have really spent a lot of time focusing on ourselves. Lagi sa tinakatingin, tayo nakatingin tayo sa sarili natin so many times. But the Bible tells us, no, stop that. And that's why one way of prioritizing your spiritual eternal values is to start serving. So, ano yung first natin? Spiritual practices. Ano yung second natin? Ito po yung pangatlo natin. Okay, the third is salamat attitude. Kailangan kasi S eh. 
So, kailangan salamat, okay? Salah, imbis na gratitude. Maganda sana gratitude, pero hindi eso. Salamat, attitude po tayo. This is something, another prioritization of our eternal values. The desire to be thankful. Gratefulness. Uh, but po important ito? Kasi a salamat attitude means you are going to choke, to choke. You're going to kill your critical spirit. Yan ang, yan ang eternal values. Be able to be, have a thankful heart. For example, bigyan ko kayo ng example. Nakatin na ba kayo ng... Na-invite ba kayo sa birthday party? Okay, na-invite ba kayo sa kasal? Sa kasal or birthday party? Ito, ito example ng walang salamat attitude. Ha? Oh, did you go to the birthday party of our friend, Ikoy de Leon? Ito, ito normal sinasabi ng mga tao. Oo nga, pero alam mo, hindi masarap yung pagkain. <laughs> Di ba? I mean... Ang dami-dami natin pwedeng sabihin, pero yung kagandang sabihin, ang di masarap yung pagkain. <laughs> Walang salamat attitude. Ininvite ka na nga, nag-complain ka pa. O kaya sa bahay naman, sa bahay, honey, honey, oh, tinan mo itong pagkain, ang sarap-sarap na luto kasi naluto ka ito ng pagkain, ng dinner. Kain ka ngayon. Lata naman ang kanin. I mean, the, the cynicism. The attitude. O ito pa isa, nasa traffic ka. Wala ka salamat attitude, nasa traffic ka. Sobra naman tong traffic, traffic dito, nakakaasar. Pero naka-aircon ka. Bago yung kotse mo, o may sasakyan ka, okay. Tingin ka sa kabila, lahat nakasab- nakasabit. Sa so, jeepney. Wala, ibig sabihin sa complain ka sa, pag- sa mga traffic, magpasanaman ka nga, nasa kotse ka eh. Or nasa grab ka. Or whatever you are. Cultivate a salamat attitude. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Because that's not eternal perspective. Okay, ano po yung tatlo natin so far? Salamat attitude, spiritual practices, service to others. Ano yung fourth S na sasuggest ko sa inyo about having eternal value? Set goals. Kailangan kayo mag-set ng goals. You need to plan out. Kailangan maging serious. Kailangan magkaroon ng action plan to become more Christ-like, to have the eternal values. Let me give you an example of how you can set goal. Set goal to read the Bible in one year. Meron na ba nakabasa rito ng Bible? Ng boom book, cover to cover? Set mo as your goal yan. What about attending a GLC class? Set mo as a goal yan. By the way, I know by faith that as I'm challenging you with these thoughts, the Lord is planting something in your heart. Huwag mong itapon yan. Huwag mong itago yan. Whatever God is putting in your heart right now to do, to set a goal, do it. Huwag bukas. Tonight, gawin mo na. Kasi bukas, hindi mo na gagawin yan. So whatever the Holy Spirit is putting in your heart right now, whatever that is, in setting a goal, you do it. Can I say to you something? While I was preparing for this message, I set a goal. Gumawa ko ng social experiment. Sino po ang social experiment, experiment ko? Yung asawa ko. Buti na lang, wala siya dito. Okay? As I was preparing for two weeks for this, the Lord impressed upon my heart, gumawa ka nga ng something experiment. So na-experiment ako for two whole weeks. Hindi po ako magde-demand. Magbibigay po ako ng grace, ng grace sa mga tao. Pangatlo, hindi po ako mapapastrate. Yan. God yun kasi alam ko madali ako mapastrate eh. Dati sa asawa ko, madali ako mag-demand eh. So ngayon, for two weeks, hindi ako mag-demand. So tinest ng Panginoon to in my second week, last Thursday lang. Last Thursday, it was a very long day for me. I started in the morning. I had an alignment meeting in the evening from 6 to 7. And then after my alignment meeting, whole day, dire-direcho meeting ko, ah. alignment meeting 6 to 7, after the 7 o'clock, nung sa alignment meeting, eh, Pastor Peter decided to have a one-on-one on me on the spot. So, nag one one kami for another 45 minutes hanggang 7.45. Pagdating yung 7.45, I only have a couple of minutes, may na akong Go Viral B Group online that I'm also going to teach. So, nagturo ako ulit noon for another one hour and a half, around, mga around 10 o'clock, tapos na ako. Pero yung gabi ko, araw ko, hindi pa tapos because I had to prepare. I had to go back to my preparing for this message. So, balik ako sa computer ko. Okay, I was doing it. And all of a sudden, my wonderful, beautiful wife came up to me and said, Honey, Kasi meron, kahapon kasi, Saturday, there was a big conference, Women to Women, in Maine. She gave a testimony. So, lumapit sa sabi niya, Honey, can you please edit my testimony? I'm so anxious already. Please edit mo naman to. So, syempre, sabi ko, Honey, 
I, have a, I had a whole day. Would it be okay if I can just do that tomorrow, bukas na lang, right? Friday, sabi ko sa kanya. Ang sabi ng misis ko sa akin ganito. Uh, okay. Naintindihan ko na po ang mga babae, kadalasan. Pag sinabi nilang, ah, uh, okay, that means hindi okay. So sabi ko, oh, okay, my wife, is no mommy, and I remember the social experiment, give grace, do not demand. So ginawa ko po, ginawa ko yung inedit ko. Inedit ko ng huwebes, pagod na pagod na ako. Inedit ko, natapos ko ng 11, at na-realize ko, grace, bigyan mo ng grace. Bigyan mo pa ng extra. Sabi ko, honey, this is the edited, tapos na yan. Pero tomorrow, when you wake up at fright, tomorrow over breakfast, we will go over it again. And then if you feel there's something to edit more, we will edit it tomorrow. So, ano yung point? Ero pa pala isang kwento. Kahapon. Kaya yesterday, I was in Manila. Okay? I, dito ako sa Isot Sanay, tumatawid. Sa Manila, hindi ako sa Manila Sanay, tumatawid. Eh. So, I chose to cross a street in, in somewhere in, in Manila in the pedestrian lane. Sa pedestrian lane ako nag, nagkakross, ha? So, naglalakad ako sa pedestrian lane. Then, all of a sudden, out of the blue, this guy on a motorbike was sprinting, bursting, Pilis. Tapos, habang malapit na ako sa gasaan, kaya pala yun, habang nagmumuto, tinataas yung visor, tinataas yung visor, pak! Tapos, like, eye to eye contact sa akin. Tapos, tinuturo ako. Shouting words that I cannot say here. Right? So, nakatingin sa akin. Alam, alam niyo po yung gusto kong sabihin? Teka, nasa pedestrian lane ako. I am the priority. Gusto ko sana, sikawan din na nasa line niya. Taba ako. Pero sabi ko, teka na. Social experiment. Grace. So habang nakatingin siya sa akin, habang mabilis na gumagano, kaya pala yung gumagano, habang umumumotor, ha? Nakatingin sa akin, hindi nakatingin sa sasadaan, sabi ko. <laughs> What's my point? My point in all these social experiments is that I had the choice. You all have a choice. So when you say you want to prioritize eternal values, you can actually do that. Why? Why can you do that? Because you have been raised from the dead, from Christ. You have been raised. And because you have been raised, you are now what? Look, for everybody, verse 3, 1, 2, 3, go. You have died, and your life is hidden. The biblical theology of this is not substitution. It's identification, meaning your life is no longer identified. It's now Christ. You find this in Galatians chapter 2. It's no longer I, but Christ who lives in me. It's the total identification that you need to understand. If I am now have died, and now my life is hidden with Christ, then therefore I have the power in Christ in me to do these things for His honor and for His glory. And that's when you guys experience the best life in Christ, in Jesus. When you follow Him, when you obey Him, because your, your life, for you have died and your life is hidden on Him. Another, another motivation for us to continue to pursue eternal values. Look, verse chapter 4. Chapter 4, uh, sorry, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with Him in glory. So the motivation is that the future glory, meron po mangyayari in the future. The problem is, a lot of people, they want the glory today. They want the glory now. But unfortunately, that is a temporal glory. Kasi lahat po ng glory here on earth, if it's earthly, you would leave it here. You could not take it with you. And that's why there is that problem that a lot of people want to be popular on earth. They want to be successful on earth. But when you die, you don't take any of those. So, let me submit to you this. You want to have the best life? Pursue eternal value. Everybody, what's our title for this evening? Live out God's best in your life. Now, after stating that biblical concept of identification, total identification with Christ, now that He has raised you, now that you have the power to be able to say no to those things, that you now have the power of grace in your life, ang tanong, mga kaibigan, is so now what? So now what? 
I could speak here of all of these things, but so what? What's that for you, right? Well, let me share to you. Because you now have that, you can now actually, ver- uh, second point, put your old life away. How did that happen? It says in, in chapter, five, chapter 3, verse 5, therefore, and what's the word that therefore? Ano ba ulit yung therefore? Stop. Check previous verses. Ano naman po yung therefore? Ang sabi dyan, therefore, dahil you are now in Christ. Therefore, you are pursuing your personal, your, your, your eternal values because you're seeking the things that are above and not earthly. Because of that, you need to consider the members of your earthly body as dead. When the Bible tells us consider, by the way, the word consider, share ko lang ha, the word consider is a accounting term. May mga accountant ba dito? Accountant, accountant, finance, okay? It's a finance accounting term, meaning you are calculating. Kinalculate mo na at lumabas ito. Meaning you have cal- calculated that it is right to you consider the members of earthly body as dead. And that word dead comes from the word mortifo. Mortifo is also from the Greek word mortify. It also comes from the, from the English word mortuary, where there is a place for dead. Ito pong word na to, body as dead, napakabigat pong word niyan. It's a strong word. Let me share to you what, you what the Bible tells us about earthly body as dead. What are, what's that? This is a photo, an image of things that you are familiar with, right? There's a guy operating a big machine. He's using his hands, okay? The idea of consider it dead, mortify to mortification, morteo. It means that these fingers, okay, listen to me, medyo gory ng konti ito, ah. These fingers, may i-stuck po dun. May iipit. At pag naipit ang mga fingers mo sa ganito kalaking machine, ano mangyayari sa fingers mo? Magagano ba yun sa pag... Hindi na. Magagano ba yun sa mga paghawak? Hindi na. Because it has been mortified. In the same manner, when the Bible tells us that we need to mortify our earthly bodies so that the old sins will be passed away, he's not suggesting to suppress or to control. The Bible says you wipe it out. Alisin mo yan. Itapon mo na yung old life mo. It's basically saying to yourself, no. And what are these things that you have to be saying no to? Tinan po, ano-ano mo yun? Masahin po natin. Immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, greed. Ano po napansin nyo? Sa mga sinasabi nating you're dead to those things. These are what? These are sins of what? These are sins of the flesh. Or the mind. It's the flesh, right? It means that immorality, impurity, passion. Ano ito eh? Sensual desires. You know, no, make mistake. No, don't, no, make no mistake about it. Our world today, we are being sens- uh, sensualized. Lahat po na mabahingin about sex. Nanonood ako anong isang araw ng golf, tra- golf show. May isang trainer ng golf. Okay? Ito yung picture sa golf. Ha? Nagtitrain siya ng golf, pero yung tinuturuan niya, halos nakabikini. Pwede ba yun? Biki- halos nakabikini, golf ang laro? Kasi yun po yung sensualization na nangyayari sa buhay natin ngayon. And that's why you need to make sure that these things is off. Huwag daw po. The desires of the flesh, the old selves become more that you desire. Bakit daw siya naging idolatry? It becomes idolatry because sa kakagawa mo, sa kakagusto mo, it now becomes higher than your desire to be with God. You would rather watch porn. By the way, the word immorality, immorality comes from the Greek word porneo, which is also the Greek word for porno, English word for pornography. So that means it's something that you're indulging your flesh. And so a lot of you might ask, Teka muna, bakit ganon, Pastor? Sinabi mo, dead to sins. I'm dead to those sins. Pero bakit? Gusto ko pa rin gawin yun. Bakit yung sinabi mo, I'm dead to immorality, I'm dead to passion, pero meron pa rin akong kagustuhan gawin yan. Why is that so? Well, can I encourage you today? Because that's a very good question. Paul, look at, look at the Bible. Paul begins that you have been raised with Christ. That means you are dead already. And because you're dead already, you are now identified with Christ. You now have the power of Christ to do that. Let me clarify that in a, in a story, in a hypothetical story. For example, that is you. You are, a, you are a crew in a ship. 
In the crew of a ship, there's a captain. Itong captain na to, bossy, bully, cruel, rude. He's bossing you around. He's telling you around. But you have no choice. You're obeying him. You have no choice. This is a photo of a person whose life was before you met Christ. Because that captain is sin. He can boss you around. Right? But something happened. Something happened. You see, soon after, the owner of the boat comes on board, takes this captain out, okay, and ties him down and puts him into jail below deck. And not only that, he gives in a new captain. This new captain is a good captain. He's loving. He's supportive. He has grace. He is a good leader. He is a shepherd. You know, and that new captain is Jesus Christ in your life. And this is a picture of a person who now have Christ in his heart. But let me, let me continue. As you obey the new captain, as you obey and enjoy the life that you have with this new captain, all of a sudden, this old captain, who was supposed to be below deck already, started to shout, Sinisigawang ka? Sinasabi sa'yo, Hoy, ikoy! Ikaw to, di ba? Ikaw to, di ba? Hoy, ikoy! Gawin mo ulit to! You know, the old captain downstairs is, is barking instructions to you. And then you say, na-intimidate ka. And then you want to obey the old captain again. Pero ano po sabi ng new captain? Sabi ng new captain, Ikoy, huwag mo nang pansinin na nasa baba na yan. Wala nang effect sa'yo yan. He's dead to you and you're dead to him. I have already rendered him powerless. This is the story of a lot of Christians. Because they feel that they still need to sin. Wala na po yun. I know a lot of you, it's a tug of war. I know a lot of you, it's a tug of war. You struggle. The old life tells you to do something and you want to obey. But when the old life tells you to do something, you say no. You see, no believer, let me repeat, no believer has to sin. No believer has to sin. You don't have to. We sin because we don't have a choice. We sin because we want to. If you're a believer. So you now have a choice. So what is our second point for tonight? Put off your old life. Alisin mo na yun. Take it out. You know, take it out. Because not only should you pursue eternal perspective and values, but also look, there's a consequence in verse 6. For it is because of these things, meaning all of that that was mentioned above, that the wrath of God will be upon the sons of disobedience. You see, when you experience the wrath of God, that means you are at war with God. Yung po yung sabihin nun, kalaban mo ang Panginoon. And you don't want to do that because there are consequences of that. That's why it's serious. It's serious about sin, so you need to take it out. What do you need to take out? Look, look, put them all aside. This idea of put them all aside is a verb that is you're throwing old clothes. You're throwing dirty clothes. Anger, wrath, Malice, slander, abusive speech. Now, Paul is introducing an image of putting off your old clothes. It's like, I wanna, it's like my, my take on this. Put off your grave clothes and put on your grace clothes. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to talk about in the next couple of minutes. So first, we need to take off our grave clothes, our grave clothes of sin. And what is this? Ano po daw yan? Ano po yung mga grave sins na yan? Number one, okay? What are these? Like old clothes. When, you, when the Bible tells us, put them away, it's like old clothes. Naka, naka ano na ba kayo ng mga maong ng mga limang buwan na hindi nilalabahan? Nakakita na ba kayo ganun? Mga five to six months na maong na hindi nilalabahan? Ayaw mong suot na ulit yun. Okay? Kaya lang, marami kristyano ganun. Bago na yung buhay mo, pero sinusuot mo palit yung mga marurumi mong damit. Right? What are these things? Anger. What else? Wrath. What else? Slander. Abusive speech. Lying, or sorry, do not lying. Uh, yeah, do not lie to one another. That's what the Bible is saying. Ano po ba yung anger? Anger is one letter away from danger. And if you want to understand, if you want to invite the devil into your marriage, into your family, if you want to invite the, the devil into your community, always be angry. Because when you're always angry, you're giving the devil a footstool. A footstool. Remember, the Bible tells us, do not, do not get angry. Do not make it as a habit. 
So don't do that. Start putting that off. Putting away wrath. What is wrath? Wrath is your outburst, your anger mo. Bilang ka nilang outburst of rage. What about slander? Put it off. Ano ba slander? Slander is gossip. You know, you know, this, you know alam, alam niyo ba yung nickname ni Satan? Ang nickname po ni Satan, slanderer. So if you want to be, if you want to have a nickname of Satan, just slander, just gossip. True story, there was a girl who was in the middle of her life. They found her with a suicide note. The suicide note had only two words. You know what these two words were? They said. They said. So whatever they said threw this girl off the edge. Our words are powerful. Don't gossip. Don't gossip. Let's dis. I like what one pastor said. Let's dismiss the cheese miss. You dismiss the cheese miss. Okay? What about abusive speech? What about abusive speech? Abusive speech is words coming out of your mouth, pero yung desire na gusto lumabas sa bibig mo is to hurt someone. You see, there are words that are coming out of our mouth. Words to encourage, words to rebuke, words to remind, words to teach. But abusive speech is when words that are coming out of your mouth is designed to hurt. Kasi mali yung puso. Yung puso galit eh. So kailangan mali ang lumalabas tuloy. Kailangan masaktan ka. Right? And the sad part is, the common recipient of our abusive speech is our family. It's our wife. It's our husband. It's our children. You know? It's your pastor. Hindi, loko lang. You know? It's, it's, they, they are the no, eh? they are the recipient. Eh? And look, do not lie to one another. Rid yourself of lying. You know, Satan is the father of all lies. So when you are lying, you're more like him. But be like Jesus. Don't be like Satan. Be like Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So again, put off your old clothes. Your grave clothes. And lastly, on putting it off. Look at this. On lastly, putting it off. It says, when you put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created them, a renewal in which there is no distinction. Regeneration brings equality. Kaya po sa simbahan, sa, sa simbahan, hindi po tayo lahat equal eh. Of course, may mga, mga may, may mas mentally sharp, may mas mas uh, mas mas ano ang mas mabigal na responsibility iba naman mas angat sa social strata yung iba medyo below the social strata it doesn't matter the christian church should have no barriers for christ breaks down all barriers ama wala po dapat let let us christians start building bridges rather than building walls Kaya if you're here and you're building walls. Stop it. You need to bridge people. Hindi pwede kayo dyan. Dito kami. Hindi po pwede ganun. Because that's not what the, what, the, what the Word of God is saying. Again, what do we need to do? Put off our grave clothes and put on our grace clothes. So I'm, let me ask you a question. Have we taken off our grave clothes? The grave clothes of sin. Well, it's now time to put that off. And before I go to our final point for tonight, I, wanna sh- listen, I want you to listen to a testimony about how this guy has put off his old clothes, grave clothes, and has put on the grave clothes. Everybody, can we all welcome my brother and our brother? Good morning. I'm Jet Kalosing, a follower and servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I was 15 years old, I had my first sexual experience with a prostitute. At this age, I learned to smoke, drink alcohol, and use drugs. While in college, I joined the fraternity and was exposed to a more liberated and carefree environment. Partying, drinking, smoking... Drug use, gambling, and sex were all part of my daily life. Violence was also included since we would often get into bar fights and rumbles. I would even sneak out my dad's guns and ammunition whenever we had rumbles 
since my dad was a former military officer then. It was also during this time when I met my first girlfriend. Sex and pornography became part of my daily life. This was also the time wherein my drug usage became worse. Although she didn't use drugs, I used and abused her to fulfill my sexual fantasies. My drug use became worse as I got addicted to shabu. I wouldn't sleep for days, weeks even. I would combine different drugs. Shabu with marijuana, with LSD, with hashes. Soon, I would find myself flunking all of my exams and dropping all of my subjects. I was then dismissed from the UP College of Engineering, which led me to stop studying. My downward spiral continued. I would also get more addicted to gambling and would frequent casinos everywhere. I would steal stuff from our house and steal from my parents just to satisfy all of my addictions. My parents sent me to our province for me to finish my engineering degree. I graduated and made my way back to Manila. As I entered the corporate world, I would go out every night, often going into high-end KTVs and clubs. Here, I would once again go back to my drug addiction and my sexually immoral practices. All of the money that I made during this time would be spent on drugs, sex, and gambling. I was so deep into sex and drugs that I started using cocaine and heroin together and in combination with all the other drugs previously mentioned. I was having sexual relationships left and right to a point wherein I, was al I, I almost got killed. In August 2003, I was invited by my former drug buddy, former sexually immoral gimmick partner, to attend his first Bible study that he will be leading. This was the time that I believed and trusted in the blood-stained gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That former drug buddy and former sexually immoral gimmick partner of mine is now a pastor in CCF. He is no, no other than Pastor Ikoy. I praise God for the life of Pastor Ikoy and for God using pastor or picks in my life. From then on, it was a roller coaster ride for me. I had to choose between putting off my old fleshly desires of sexual immorality or putting on a new life I have in Christ. It was the greatest struggle of my life. In 2007, I went to work in the U.S. for several months. And here I forgot all about the Lord during my stint in the States. I brought my Bible with me, which I never read. And I didn't even attend Sunday worship services during my entire stay. I also had a relationship with an unmarried Filipino American who has two kids. I was again I was again on board that sinking ship. I was so guilty in everything that transpired that I asked the Lord for forgiveness. On my trip back home on board the plane, there was a deafening silence. I knew that I hurt the Lord. I started crying profusely. For several hours, I kept on crying. My eyes were swollen and hurt so much. And then I started praying. I remembered that Jesus died on the cross for me. And I felt God's love. I knew that I was forgiven. This was the time that I fully surrendered my life to the Lord and decided to turn from my old self and follow Him. 
Colossians 3, verses 1 to 3 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. This was around June 2007, and it has been exactly 17 years ago since that flight and encounter with God. I have taken off my old self and have now been 17 years free from sexual immorality. 17 years free from cigarettes and drunkenness. 17 years free from pornography and drugs and gambling. Praise God. I'm looking forward to living out the best life in Jesus for the remaining time that I have here on earth. My priority now are the eternal values I hold on so deeply. Me, my wife, Michelle, and my son, Enzo, by God's grace, are growing in our Christ-likeness. I'm part of a D group, and I'm also leading our own D group. I'm privileged to serve the Lord as part of the BSF school program. I was also part of CCFBF's Couples and Next Gen Ministry. And as I continue to put on my new life in Jesus, the Lord has opened opportunities for me to share my faith and influence. Currently, I'm an engineering consultant for a government agency, helping improve and professionalize its engineering aspect for a better, safer, and efficient working environment. Please pray for me that I will be able to always put on a heart of compassion Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience as I minister to the new mission, the new mission field God has brought me to. Beyond those, may I always put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity to my family and friends. Again, I am Jet Kalosing, once putting on grave clothes, now putting on grace clothes. And by His grace alone, living the best life in Jesus, to God be the glory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Clarify ko lang po, nung sinabi ni Jet, nakasama niya ako sa mga araw na yon, na mga oras na yon, mas malalas pa po yung ginagawa niya sa akin, okay? Clarify ko lang. And then, then, just kidding. It's, it's, <laughs> it's amazing how God just, you know, transforms people. He, you know, he, he and I, we were into drugs, heavy drugs before. But now I cannot imagine sharing a stage with him, preaching God's word. Because when you put yourself and put eternal values as your priority, when you put off your old self, you know what's going to happen? You will experience and live out God's best in your life. Which takes me to my final point for today. All right? The third point. The thing that people forget is that when you take out something in your life, like for example, yun, immorality, tinanggal na yun, and you don't put something there that is good, that is of God, that immorality, whatever that is, is going to come back. And so the concept of the idea of true transformation and lasting change is when you put off your grave clothes, you need to put on the new life in Christ. And that's why the Bible tells us in verse 12, look, we have been chosen. You have been chosen. We have been chosen to be holy and to be beloved. It is why because we have been chosen and we are holy, we are now being asked to put on these things. God loves you. He is for you. He is for us. He is on our side. We did not make ourselves holy. God made that to us. We did not elect ourselves into the kingdom of God. God chose you and I. It is why what happens is that when you put your faith in Jesus, you enter into this new status with God, this new position with God. 
that we, He will be able to declare you as holy. Kahit ano pa yung sama na ginawa mo ng before. It is why we feature stories like Jet here. So that even though you know that you are only as lit or as half of what this guy has gone through, and yet this guy has been saved by grace, then people like us who have lesser, I guess, pass, God can also heal. And that's why the, com- the, the command is put on. Put on is the command. It means to put on a new spiritual wardrobe. It is a decisive decision. To put on means to live it out. Live Christ, this new life that you have. And by the way, have you noticed? Kanina, it was what you put off are matters of the heart. What you put on are matters and characteristics of good relationships. Okay? So in your marriage, in your family, in whatever relationships you are in, you need to have, you need to show a heart. You need to put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, etc., etc. It means to put on this new life that you have in Christ. When the Bible talks about compassion, it's about pity. It's about sympathy. It's about being sensitive towards others. It's about sensitive to those who are, having, who are suffering. The word compassion here is the same word used in, in, in the Good Samaritan. Remember the Good Samaritan? The Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan chose not to, not to cross the street. Other people chose to cross the street. Walang compassion eh. Pero the good Samaritan had the compassion. He need to went through that. He went and, and served that person. And that means when you, are com- when, you, when you are compassionate, that means you look people around you where you could actually help, especially those who are suffering. Another thing that we need to put on is kindness. This, this is interesting. The original word kindness is krestos. The original word for Christ is Christos. So Christos and Christos are similarly identical. And I submit to you, the reason they are similarly identical, because Jesus and kindness is identical. When you are being kind, you are being more like Christ. Kindness means good. Kindness of the heart. So let me ask you, kamusta naman po ang puso natin when it comes to security guard? When it comes to waiters or servers or our grab driver na nalilate or yung grab delivery guy na gusto 10 seconds lang nakababa ka na ng 25 floors para kunin yung delivery. Asan ka na? Asan ka na po kayo, sir? I mean, how, how do you react? Do you react? Tika muna, 10 seconds ka po na. Ganun ba ang reaction mo? Treat them with kindness. What about humility? Humility is being able, you know, by the way, the word humility was non-existent in the time of Jesus in the Romans. Do you know that? Bawal ang, humi- bawal ang humble sa mga Romans ng panahon na yun. But Jesus and Christians, they introduced this word humility, humilitas, because before it was uncalled for to humble yourself. In Roman culture, that's a no-no. But we need to put on the grace clothes, and that means we need to provide humility Jesus personified it. And that's how you live your best life in Jesus. When you talk about Jesus, when you think about Jesus first, others second, yours last. What about gentleness? Gentleness is self-resistant. By the way, being gentle is not being soft, okay? Marami pong isip, ay malambot. No, no, gentleness is not soft. Meekness is strong, is strength, and that is who Jesus is. Patience, binibilisan ko na lang po kasi marami tayong isisiksik on the limited time. No? To be patient means to be log-tempered. Ang tawag po sa patience is long suffering. right? By the way, have you noticed, for those of you that are familiar with the fruit of the Spirit, that are, did, you, are you, were you, did you see this? Kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, these are all fruit of the Spirit. You know, And when you understand the theology of the Holy Spirit, you know that the fruit of the Spirit, you don't have to force it. When you have the Holy Spirit inside you, these things will come out. You, need to, you don't have to manufacture. Hindi mo kailangan iire. Alam mo yung Tagalog? Hindi mo kailangan iire. Hindi. Ang fruit ng Spirit, it will come out naturally because of who God is in you. Right? Patience. And then finally, the Bible tells us, put on what? Bearing one another and forgive.
Brother, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, also should you. Can I ask a question? Have the Lord forgiven you? Okay. Maraming beses ba forgiven ng Panginoon? And if that is so, then we need to forgive one another as well. We need to be gracious. Gracious. When you put on that new self, that means those of you that have hurt you or those of things that you, you have to forgive them. There are some people here today in a big room like this. One of the best things, or perhaps one of the reasons why God brought you here is because you need to forgive someone. You're holding on to a grudge. You need to forgive someone today. Let me, let me have an experiment, okay? Experiment, experiment time again. Everybody, raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. And then make a, clench, clench your fist. Clench, clench. Okay? Ngayon, habang ginagawa niyan, clench stronger. Higpitan nyo. Yan. Yung talagang, ano, yung talagang may higpit ng kapit. Okay? Okay, squeeze it. Squeeze it. Squeeze it hard. Are you squeezing hard? Okay, good. Mga one hour to eh. Sige. You know, how do you know, what do you notice? What do you notice? Una, una, nakakapagod, right? Pangalawa, pangalawa. In the first 30 seconds, ang masakit lang ito. But as we go along, clenching it, sumasakit itong arms. Then may, may sakit na po yung shoulder mo. Masakit na yung buong katawan mo ngayon. Yan, masakit, masakit. Oh, taas kamay, taas kamay, okay? Di po tayo tapos, taas kamay, right there. You know, it will probably go down, it probably will hurt. It, you know, if you do this for, for, a, for a whole day, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna get sick. It's because of the tension, it's beginning to hurt. Okay, ready, ready? One, two, three, release. Sarap, di ba? What, what did you feel? Ano naramdaman nyo? Gumaang yung loob. Unforgiveness is like that. Imagine mo, nakaganyan ka for 10 years already. Kasi may sampung taon na hindi ka, pinag- hindi ka nagpapa- nagpapa-forgive. If this, if this simple example impacts us physically, can you imagine spiritually, ano nangyayari if you are not forgiving? Alam nyo, alam po ng misis ko to, I don't have any unforgiveness by God's grace in my life. Marami pong g- Perhaps galit sa akin, pero ako po, I have no, I have no, I can sleep at night by God's grace. Try nyo na, try nyo yung misis ko, tulog ako lagi sa gabi. Why? Because I know, I am a sinner, eh, and I know I have been forgiven. So why will I not forgive other people? Folks, there are some people here, you need to forgive. I pray that today, that is what you're gonna do. And lastly, can everybody read verse 14? Beyond all of these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. You know, in the be- do you know the, ori- the, the one of the most eloquent definition and chapter of love in the Bible? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul also wrote it, right? He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I speak with tongues of men and angels, but if I do not have love, I become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Folks, love is the greater speech. It's everything. The Bible tells us, if I have the gift of prophecy and all the mysteries, as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. I submit to you, love is even greater than intelligence. Love is sacrifice. Love is excellent. Love is the highest word in the human language. It is the synonym of God. And the Bible tells us that it's what? The mighty bond. No, no, no. The perfect bond of unity. Why is it called the perfect bond of unity? Love. Can I tell you something? Because when you are going to put on a new life, we're going to have compassion, humility, kindness, gentleness, patience. When you do that, it's not going to be perfect. Sasablay ka, papalpaka, because the execution is not right, even if the heart is right. But the beauty of this is that when the motivation comes from the angle of love, ano mangyayari? it's all going to be okay. Because the execution might be wrong, but if the motivation is right, it will have the impact. And that is what love is all about. Let me close with a final story. True story of a pastor in the States, Tony Compolo. Pastor Tony, he was flying from Hawaii 
for a conference. He was coming from the East Coast, and just like about five hour difference, uh, five hour time difference. Okay, so when Pastor Tony arrived in Hawaii, he slept, and then he woke up around three in the morning, hungry, and couldn't sleep anymore. So he decided to go out of his hotel, and in front of his hotel was a diner, something similar to this, still open. And so he went in, okay, he asked the guy behind the counter when he came over and said, hey, can I have a cup of coffee and donut? So the guy took out the donut, gave him and poured him a cup of coffee. And so while Pastor Tony was eating and eating the donut and drinking coffee at exactly around 3.30 in the morning, the diner doors burst open and eight to nine boisterous prostitutes that are wearing flimsy outfits came into the diner. Pastor Tony said, I am completely out of place, right? I'm completely, sabi ko lang siya, but may mga prostitute dito. So sabi na, sama pa ng mga suot, right? I mean, malalaswa ang suot. And so before he finished his coffee, he said, Tika, escape na ako dito. I don't want to want to see in here. But when he was about to walk out, the girl seated beside him, it's a small bar, started to share, hey, to the other prostitutes, hey, it's my birthday tomorrow. It's my 39th birthday tomorrow. The other girls started to sneer at this girl who said, it's his birthday. One of the girls said, why? Do you want us to buy you cake? Another girl said, why are you saying it's your birthday? Do you want us to throw a party for you? And another person said, why? Do you want us to buy gifts for you? And then the lady who said it was his birthday said, why, can you, I, why are you guys so mean to me? I just wanted to say it's my birthday tomorrow. I have never expected anything. You know why? Because for 38 years, I have never gotten a birthday party. I have never gotten a birthday cake. And never even remembers me in my birthday. And so when Pastor Tony overheard that, instead of leaving, he stayed. He stayed behind until all of the ladies started to pile out at 4 o'clock in the morning. And so when all the ladies left, Pastor Tony went to the guy at the back. The guy's name was Harry. And he said, hey, Harry, did those, are those girls coming here often? And then Harry said, yeah, every night. Even the girls standing beside me, the one's going to have cel- who's the one's going to celebrate her birthday tomorrow. Oh yeah, that girl, that girl's name is Agnes. She's always here every night at three thirty in the morning. And Pastor Tony said, "Hey, why don't we do this? Why don't I come back tomorrow morning, surprise her, bring a cake, and then sing a happy birthday song? What do you what do you think about that idea?" Harry suddenly started to open his eyes and called off his wife and said, Hey, honey, hey, there's this guy here who wants to throw a party for Agnes. Is that okay? So wasn't that a great idea? And then the wife said, Yeah, that's a great idea. And so all of them agreed. And so Pastor Tony said, Hey, okay, I'm going to come back here tomorrow, 3 o'clock. I'm going to set the place up. I'm going to bring a cake. And then Harry said, No, 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 no. You're not going to bring a cake. That's my part. I'm going to bake the cake. And so true enough, Pastor Tony went home, and the next day, around 2.30, before 3, he went back. He, he put a cardboard sign, happy birthday, and, he put, and they were all ready. You know, and past to Pastor Tony's surprise, at around 2.30, 2.35, the place was packed. Sinabi yata ng asawa na magpapakain ng libre. So everybody started to go there, all the prostitutes, they were all there inside the place. Wall to wall. And at 3.30 in the morning, at the dot, the door opened, swung in, opened, and Agnes saw it. And they started to shout, and they started to sing a happy birthday song. And Pastor Tony, as he was writing this, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't describe the flabbergasted face of Agnes. She was just so surprised. She was so taken back that somebody's giving her a surprise party. Her weeks you know, wobbled. She had to hold on to someone. And they had to start singing her songs. And she started crying. And then Harry, Harry who baked the cake, went out and gave the cake to her. And she sat down. And while they were singing a happy birthday song, Agnes kept on crying, crying, and crying. It's kind of awkward. 
And so Harry went out and said, Hey, Agnes, here's the knife. Cut the cake so we can all eat it. Still, no reply from Agnes. Crying, sobbing. And then Harry said, Okay, if you're not going to cut it, I'll cut it. Because I want to eat. He was trying to lessen the situation. But when he's about to cut the cake, Harry saw the eyes of Agnes still fixated on the cake in deep thought. And so Harry out of the blue said, Hey, Agnes, hey, we don't have to cut the cake. You want the cake? You could bring home the cake. And then Agnes, after hearing that, start, stopped sobbing. Then look at Harry and then he said, Really? I can take home this cake? I just live down, down the street and there are people there who have never tasted the birthday cake. Can I? Can I? And then Harry said, Yeah, you could. And so Agnes stood up out of the blue, left the party, went down the street, and everybody in the room stood silent. They didn't know what happened. Where is Agnes going? Right? And then Pastor Tony in his memoir said, Looking back, it seems rather strange for a pastor to be leading a prayer meeting with a bunch of prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning in Honolulu. But it was the right thing to do. And so when everybody, when, when Agnes left and everybody was silent, he just shouted out, Hey guys, why don't we all huddle? And why don't we pray for Agnes? And so Pastor Tony started to pray for Agnes. He prayed for her salvation. He prayed that her life would change and that God would be good to her. And so when, when, when Pastor Tony st- stopped finishing his prayer and everybody started to lighten up, Harry, the guy, the kitchen guy, came to Pastor Tony and said, with a sneer in his voice, Hey, you didn't tell me you were a preacher. And he goes, by the way, where is your church? Harry said. Pastor Tony, the, Bible, the Holy Spirit just gave him the right words to say. He said, you know, my church is a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. Harry waited for a moment. He didn't answer anything. Then finally, Harry said, No, you don't. There's no, there's no church like that. There's no church like that that would love a prostitute and serve cake and do that. Come on. If there's a church like that, I'll be the first one to attend that church. Because I have never attended my church in my whole life. And Pastor Tony said, Yes, I know. Because I too would attend that church. You see, love is the most powerful emotion that we can have. God is love. And when we express that love without expecting anything in return, that's when the love becomes sincere. That's when the love becomes genuine. And that's when lives change so I don't know what you guys are going through in your family in your marriages in your children in your community in your life in your digo in your church wherever it is in your workplace but can I encourage you can I encourage you wouldn't we love to be a part of a church or a family that reach out into the darkness wouldn't you want to be part of a church where brothers and sisters put a new love put a new life and love and show people who Christ is. Because when you do that, truly, Jesus becomes the expression of God's love. Wouldn't you want your marriage, wouldn't you want want your husband and your wife to forgive and to say, hey, you know, we've done something in the past that is bad, not right, but today I choose to just let that go and just embrace each other in love. You know when that happens and when we do that? We express the love of God, Jesus Christ, to the world. When we reach beyond our comfort zone and we reach past what is not easy, the world will see Jesus Christ, the expression of God's love to all of us. And when we realize that the church is not a museum for saints, but a hospital for sinners, 
you know, this 6 p.m. crowd, you will bring more people here because you have experienced the true love of Christ. And that is the expression of God's love. And folks, when we put off our grave clothes and we put on our grace clothes, we'll be able to live the best life in Christ. My prayer is that you all, we all, experience that. Experience the grace of God so we could truly love other people the way God has loved us. Can you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we, we need to love more. We need to really have that in our lives. And Lord, you said in Colossians chapter 3, that when we do have you, we let the peace of you, Jesus, rule in our hearts. And when we have that peace that rules in our hearts, you are called us to be in this one body, which is you, Lord, we become thankful. And so tonight, we just want to thank you as we end our message today. Thank you for the love, Lord Jesus. Thank you for reaching out to us. Thank you for dying on the cross and paying for all of our sins. Thank you for all doing that because you want us to be with you. And my prayer, O oh Lord, that today, as we pray to live out your best in our life, help us to prioritize eternal values. Help us to put off our old self and help us tonight to put on our new self in Jesus. Because Lord, when we do that, we not experience the best of our life, but we also express the best in our life, which is you, Jesus, the ultimate expression of God's love. We thank you, we praise you, as we lift up to you, O Lord, all of these things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. God bless you, everyone. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for joining us this evening with